No, thank you for having me. Sorry about last time. No, no problem. That's fine. I'm, uh, I'm very grateful that you that you take you're taking the time for for us. So cool. Oh, of course. Anytime. Anytime. So yeah. So thank you so much for being here today. It's so it's so cool to have you. Uh, I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one, but uh, I personally miss you on the court in the WNBA. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of fans feel the same and and would like to know how you've been doing lately uh, and what you have been up to. So what can you tell us? Yeah, I've been uh, working out to get back on the court. Um, everybody think I'm retired, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to be back and um, I'm going to retire on like my terms. So I've been working out, but also doing um, a lot of my business stuff on the side. So it's been good. And and you you were the with uh, with Team USA uh, for a mini camp a few weeks ago. Um, how, uh, how, how did it go? No, it went good. It was for me to just come in and see, you know, they did me a favor to see how I can look against the girls. Mm -hmm. And I think I looked good and kept up. So I think everybody um, can see that I can still play with everyone. Great. <laughs> uh, so so there is a chance we can see you uh, in the league next season or, or even mm -hmm. overseas before that. Uh, is there a chance that we can see you? Yeah, I think that there's always a chance until, uh, um, you know, until I tell everybody I'm finished, I'm retired, there's always a chance for everything. Okay. Uh, I have to say, last year there was this uh, this news about you being uh, involved in uh, in the American group that bought uh, Portes in France. So I was uh -huh. already I was already picturing you playing in France uh, yeah. at, at some point. What was it something that you you thought about, and is it still possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were. Um, I was I joined the group that owned Poe team. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I was more like involved because I, um, something happened where now uh, they sold the ownership. Yeah. But now um, I want to come to Europe and really have my own team, so I can do it my way and you know, help. I'm here to like help. I want to be able to help to make more women's teams in Europe to help uh, make uh, men's teams successful. So we need more women's ownership in, in Europe. It's not many women's who owns teams in, in Europe. And I want to um, help change that, especially being a black woman. Feel free to come to France. We will welcome you with open arms. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> many teams would love to have you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so people in Europe might uh, not know this, but you're not exclusively a, a basketball player. A player, like you said, uh, you're also a, an, an entrepreneur. Uh, you're a film producer. You make music. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your yeah. songs was, uh, was on NBA 2K23. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw you being an analyst on NBA TV. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you also own a, an ice cream shop. You're an ambassador <laughs> for Women's Sports Foundation. You have your own foundation. Um, mm -hmm. Even when basketball is not in the equation, you you're incredibly busy. Um, how do you manage to do all that and uh, what do you focus on right now? Yeah, uh, I think I managed to do everything by having like a good people around me, a good team, you know, like now I have somebody to run the ice cream shop. My dad is manager and, um, you know, with the movies, I had a team of, of young people who are like new in film. We put together the movie. Um, so really it's about having a good team around you. And for everyone out there, the movie is called Lanier. Yeah. It's on Amazon. You can watch it now. It's about a haunted lake here in Georgia. And it's really haunted. There's so many things happening. So this is a good thriller movie if you guys haven't watched. And really, I, I started to become more busy because when I tore my ACL, my first injury, mm -hmm. I was sitting here like, what do I do? I only play basketball. What can I do? <laughs> so I said, let me explore different things to see. I want to stay busy if I'm if I don't play. If I don't pick up a basketball, what can I do? So I started finding um different things that were fun. And uh, so, how, how did how did music uh, come to you? Where, where, was there uh, mm -hmm. has it always been a, a, pro a project of yours? Uh, what were you singing? Yeah, you <laughs> I wasn't singing when I was younger, but ten years ago. People don't know I've been doing music a long time. I started to, you know, watch people record. I said, I want to do this. I want to try. So I made my first song and um, everybody's like, oh, my God, you can do the music. I'm like, I like it. I want to continue to do it. But some people were like, what are you doing? Play basketball. You are a basketball player. Why are you trying to do this? But I'm glad I didn't listen to them, you know, because you can do other things. You can do many things. You know, life is not limited to one thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and now I have on the 2K video game, different things. So I'm I'm planning to do more music and to do it like on to I wanted it to be in movies and commercials and 
hopefully like this. Okay, and are you planning a, a, of a singing in front of, playing your, your music in front of crowds or? Yeah, um, but like you said, I'm so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to like go to do a show or something, but maybe when I retire, I'll have more time I can do like a show or travel and come to France, do a show or something. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be cool. <laughs> Uh, so I was really looking forward to uh, to take a trip down memory lane uh, with you to talk about your amazing career, even if it's not finished. <laughs> I understand yeah. that. Yes. Uh, it, it's one of the best uh, career there ever was in the league, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. can, can you take me back to, to where it started in, in Baltimore? Uh, how influential was Baltimore uh, in your style of play uh, and your mentality on the court? Yeah, it, uh, a lot of people don't know I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, it's close to Washington, D.C. It's it's really like a basketball town. You know, the East Coast is basketball. From New York down to Miami, basketball. East Coast is known for having very tough, gritty, you know, basketball. More than the West Coast, more than the Midwest. So, you know, growing up in Baltimore, I played with all the guys, you know, and they accept me. They didn't treat me like, oh, she's girl. You know, they make me tough because of this. When I played, start playing against the women's, I was so tough because the guys treat me like the same. You know, you don't go many places and they treat you the same. They they try to make it like, oh, she's girl. They yeah. didn't do that. So that's why I think they helped me so much playing in Baltimore. And were there any any players uh, from Baltimore? I mean, pro, pro players that you uh, you were looking up to? When, when you oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, I grew up with Carmelo Anthony. I grew up with Rudy Gay. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the big ones. So, you know, we had a lot of um, big time players come out of that area. Um, I remember I grew up with Kevin Durant because he's from Washington, D.C. Yeah. So, you know, these players, they love women's basketball. They treat it the same. They respect it. And that's why I feel like I became one of the players uh, I became. And were there were there women uh, women players that you admired? Maybe uh, wanted to emulate? Yeah, I remember when I was um, I think I was twelve. I went to the basketball court and all the guys was like, "Hey, there's this WNBA. You can play in this." And I'm like, "What's WNBA?" They said it's 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 woman NBA, like NBA but for girls. I was like, "Really?" They said, "Go watch on the TV." And I started to watch, and I saw Lisa Leslie and Don Staley and Cynthia Cooper. Cheryl Swoops, I mean, so many great players. And I was like, they're tall like me. I don't have to feel funny because I was very tall. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel all the girls were short. I feel like funny. Like when I saw them, I feel more confidence. Like I'm sane. So um, that helped me a lot. Yeah. And, and about Baltimore, because uh, in Europe, we, we mostly know Baltimore for what we What we saw on TV on on the wall, uh -huh. mainly on uh -huh. the wall. It's not true. Yeah. I yeah. always tell people, you know, when, when I tell people, they say, "The why are you from the wall?" I said, "No, this is a show." Mm -hmm. If you look and Google so so many beautiful things about Baltimore, you see we have um, the sea, the seaside. We have good seafood. We have um, our, our special food is crabs, crab cakes. That's our specialty food. People in Baltimore are very nice, hardworking. Every city has good side and bad side. It's every city, you know? So if you make a city about, um, you know, you can make a city about Arkansas. You can make a city about Miami. If you show only the bad side, people would think this, but it's not true. You have always good sides to a city. Like in France, you have good good side and you know the bad side, you keep away. You stay, you keep it there, <laughs> right? We're the same. <laughs> yeah. And I always, I always wonder that these uh, East-West showdown games, you know, these games are on the wire. Were they a real thing back then in, in in the town, or it's more so like competition? Like, oh, I'm from the West Side. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm from the East Side. Like jokes. Like not like um. Okay. Yeah, like this, just talks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, wh when did you start uh, realizing that you were um, much better than most players? Uh, of your age and that mm. there was a, a real possibility to become a, a professional basketball player? I think um, during, during my age of growing up, I wasn't better. I was like very normal. Mm -hmm. I didn't play much. The coach didn't. I wasn't star. Um, but when I got to high school, maybe when I was about 12, I started to be like better. And I was like, oh, she's getting good. It just naturally came. 
And when I went to high school, I wasn't like all, all American. I wasn't like top 10 player. I was still kind of normal. And I didn't, I wasn't going to Tennessee or UConn, like Gino, Pat Summit. During that time, Pat Summit and Gino were like the biggest. Yeah, the rivalry. and then... The rivalry. I wasn't recruited to go there. I wasn't really this big player, like people think. But I knew that I can play like them. I knew I was as good as them, even though I didn't have um, the attention like them. So when I went to college, I went to Louisville. They wasn't good. They wasn't the Louisville you know now. Mm -hmm. They were just normal team. They didn't go past the first round of the NCAA tournament. But when I got there, I remember saying, you know what? I want to change this. I want this to be like one of the best. Well, now you see it's always one of the best. <laughs> you put them on the map, actually. I yeah. Because now, yeah. yeah, when I tell people I went to Louisville, now they say, oh, you went to a good team. But yeah. back then, when I told people I was going to Louisville, they said, where is this place? I'm like, it's in Kentucky. So you see the difference now. <laughs> Were there were there other uh, universities where you where you could have where you could have gone uh, instead of of Louisville? Where were there other? Yeah, but they weren't big schools that were really good during the time, like St. John's. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. yeah, they weren't really big names, mm -hmm. big name schools. So I went to a school that wasn't like big name in bat women's basketball, mm -hmm. and made them big a big name because they were known for men's. Rick Pitino, they had big name for men's and football. You know, American football, but not bas women's basketball. Nobody cared. <laughs> now, <laughs> now they do. Now they do. Now they do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's say, so Louisville the, was the place where you really started to uh, to to make some noise, and you, you had a stellar career there, uh, you, especially your your senior year with uh, this great run and the, the championship game against UConn. Um, yeah. what, what's the first thing that uh, comes to your mind when you when you think about your time uh, with the Cardinals and this whole? Uh, NCAA experience because uh, we don't have that in Europe and it's always yeah. fascinating to hear about it. To watch. It's a great feeling. It's like an adrenaline rush like to be an underdog team and to continue to win and go and nobody thinks you can. Those are the best stories. <laughs> you know, to go and, and beat like Courtney Parrish during that time like and she told everybody if she didn't win she was going to pay back the scholarship. She did <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah. then uh, I think the main thing was just like going there when nobody thought we can go there. Mm. Now, when we went to the national championship game, I played during a time where all the talent went to UConn and Tennessee. They got all the talent. Yeah. Like now it's different. Everybody's good. It's spread yeah. out. LSU, Maryland, Notre Dame, you know. But then it was only these two teams like they were really good. So UConn had all the players. Yeah. It was hard to beat them. But I'm glad that I got the chance to go to a championship because if I if, if it was today, I can win a national championship. Yeah. But back then, it was just every, everybody was at one school. Yeah, and they, they had kind of a, a super team with uh, Maya Moore, yeah. Tina Charles, uh, Rene Montgomery. Like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfair. Sade <laughs> Houston, they had a team like big team. Yeah. Now everybody now is spread. They, they all the teams have good team players now. So. Yeah, but you you ended up uh, the first pick in the in the draft, uh, mm -hmm. even with all these incredible players. So, what, what was it like to have this these expectations, uh, this pressure that you eventually had to deal with uh, later in in Atlanta for many years? Um, how, how was it? You know, I think I manifested being number one because mm -hmm. there was other players that could have been number one. Marissa Coleman from Maryland, yeah, Renee Montgomery, UConn, Dewana Bonner from yeah. Auburn. Um, it was so many good players coming out. Um, I manifested it. I spoke about it every day. Mm. I wrote it down on paper. I I, I think, I, I feel it. I, I breathe it every day. I said, this is me. I'm going to Atlanta. And I, I was, when I heard my name, it was like, wow, I did this. You know, like you kind of like what you think is what you feel. It can become reality. And I made it my reality. And you, your legacy in, in Atlanta is, is fantastic. You were a five-time All-Star, two-time scoring champion, steals leader, seven All-Defensive first teams, uh, three finals, uh, four Olympic and world gold medals with Team USA while you were uh, with the dream. I mean, it's just it's just insane just to enumerate that. So uh, do, do you feel like at the time you, you had the respect and the, the light you, you deserve for what you were doing? No. 
I was because it, it, it seemed seem like it from afar. I did not. Um, I have to be honest. I was, um, of course, the franchise and the star of the team, but I didn't have the respect on the back end. Okay. You know, I was very treated kind of that poorly. And um, I think now Atlanta, the Atlanta now, they have a great staff. Okay. They have a great ownership. Um, but I wish I would have been treated better as a, as a franchise player. I think when I left and I went to Vegas, hmm. I got to see like, oh, this is how you treat these players. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I came from just from an era of old school thinking, hmm. you know, with, with yeah. it was just old school thinking. And I think uh, when you have professional players, you have to treat them like professionals. They're not in high school. They're not in college. You treat them like adults. So. But now I'm glad to see that the women now, they're getting treated that way. So times have changed. Yeah. Times have changed. Mm -hmm. and, and on the court, it sometimes felt that your, your teams were, were really good, but that mm -hmm. the dream had one superstar, you, and had mm -hmm. to deal with uh, insanely stacked opposing teams like Seattle, Minnesota. Uh, do you think it could have uh, gone different? And do you regret anything from, from your time in, in Atlanta? on the court i mean because there was this no i don't i don't regret anything even the back stuff on the back end i don't regret it it made me the woman i am um i had a great team i feel like um you know with sancho little she's she was mm -hmm. a great player erica de souza isiana castro marquez like we i had I got to play with lindsey harding one year we've had some great teams it's just we just couldn't get over the hump mm -hmm. i think we had the teams to win the championships i think we had i think um you know Some things that we could have done coaching could have been better or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some things, me being a young player, immature, yeah. I could have done better, uh, probably with a little bit more discipline. So um, I think we could have done it. But like you said, I mean, what you just read me is a really great career. I have nothing to to hold my head down about. What what a great career. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not over. <laughs> And not over. <laughs> uh, it I have a very French question for you. Uh, in okay. 2014, uh, you, you played with Céline Dumer, who is a, who's a legend in France. Uh, I know her time there was frustrating, to say the least. Uh, she never came back after this one season. Uh, what do you remember about her as a player and, a, and as a teammate? I loved her. Um, you know, I probably could have been a better teammate for her because I was young and dumb. But <laughs> I, I loved playing with her, and I wish she would have came back because she was always what we needed. I know it was a time for her to like just experience yeah. to see what it was like. because I think it was Olympics coming up. Yeah. She wanted to be around the competition, uh, watching her. I enjoyed, she used to go to each city and go shopping. She would go to New York. She'd come back with some bags <laughs> or we go to LA. She has to, because these were great experiences for her. Um, she's one of the best players uh, in French basketball, I believe, if not the best. Yeah, she's um, the best she is the best. Um, I enjoyed her and I wish I could have played with her more. So what is she doing now? Oh, she's the GM of the national French team. Now. Of course, she, as she should be. <laughs> and really, she she really had such a good shape mm -hmm. that if she wanted to play now, she can play now and still dominate. She just finished her career. Actually, she she still played uh, last year. In a, she did play last year. Oh, okay. She last year. She just How old is she? Uh, I think she's 40 or 41. Yeah, and she looks like she's 30. Exactly. She looks so good. So, uh, yeah, she's she's great. And... Um, I'm gonna try to reach out to her because yeah, she was a, just a great person, great teammate. Yeah, if you if you come if you come to France uh, later, you you probably you probably cross her cross her path. I will cross her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about teammates, who who'd you say um, was the best and and or the one you had the most fun with uh, during your career? Um, I had a lot of fun with um, Erica D'Souza. She was fun. She was a fun teammate because she just had a personality that made you laugh every day yeah. in practice. I enjoyed uh, Sancho a little. Uh, and when I went to Vegas, I really enjoyed uh, Dierica Hamby. Mm -hmm. She's great. She's a great kid. Yeah, yeah. she is. Uh, during your time in Atlanta, you, you had a, a lot of success with Team USA. Um, what, what are the best memories you have with, with uh, the, the national team? And please don't say when you beat France for the gold medal in 2012. Oh, yeah. they were. We did play France. I remember. Um, I think my fondest memories were just hanging with the girls. Like, we would go and play. We have a game room. And we hang with the guys' team. And they play cards. And we play this cards game, Blu-ray, and all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. And I think one of my favorite people to hang with in USA is Brittany Griner. She's a lot of fun. So like during those times, you would just see me and Brittany, me and Brittany. And um, it was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, did you did you talk to her lately? How uh, how do you uh, how do you think she she is now after all these uh, incredible difficult times that she she had? Um, I think that she's a great person. I think that she is more sensitive on the inside than people think. Mm. So I want people to leave her alone. Just leave Brittany alone. <laughs> Let her be. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about the 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 bubble. Because people may not may not know that, but you you were a, a driving force in the decision to play in the bubble and to to use this platform to to raise awareness uh, for social justice uh, mm -hmm. and uh, police violence and discrimination. Uh, I think you were also uh, the one who suggested to add the the name of Brianna Taylor on the uniforms. Yes. Um, can you tell me about all the process and the steps that that led to this uh, <laughs> turning point? Yeah, um, I basically came with the idea, and then from the idea. I presented it and it was like, uh, I don't know. So I said, okay, I'm going to put this on social media so everybody can help me do it. <laughs> start a petition. <laughs> and I put it on the social media. And I think um, right after that, the NBA did the same. Mm -hmm. they, they took my idea, yeah. right? Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, and then they put their names. They put phrases on the back. Um, but it stemmed from my idea of putting it on social media. But I think that um, it had to be a good idea for everybody to especially the NBA to, to, to want to use it. Um, I think that um, it was more so to fight what was going on. It was so much social injustice, not just in America, but around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw people protest testing in France. People were protesting in, in London, UK. Yeah. Uh, so this was a, a world thing. It was to show like, hey, enough with judging people for their skin color instead of their character. You know, and I think um, this, we did a, a great work during that time. I think we planted some seeds that are now growing today. And yeah, what what are your your, your memories about this time? Because uh, it was so so singular to to play in the in the bubble. It's uh, it's it seems so so heavy, you know. Can I be honest? My one of my biggest memories. I was so exhausted yeah. during this time. I was drained only because every day it was something on TV. Mm you kept seeing someone get killed. We saw George Floyd get killed. And then this person, it was so draining. And then to play basketball during this time, oh, it was hard, but I knew we needed to play because we needed to use it to get the message across. You know, so I remember that time being very hard, very tough, exhausted. Um, and then it was hard because being in the bubble, can you imagine not leaving anywhere for three months? You cannot go anywhere for three months. Yeah. We're in the same place. For three months, I was like, and then I played to the end. We went, we went to the finals. Yeah. So everybody else went home. Mm -hmm. It was just us in Seattle, and Seattle. We were just like, and I was just like, oh, I want to win a championship. Focus on winning championship. But I just like, I have cabin fever. I need to see what does the world look like again. <laughs> three months, three and a half months. I was like, it was a very tough season. One of the toughest seasons in my whole career. Yeah. It was too much going on in the world, and to play, it was tough. And still, you you had an amazing season. On an, and still had a good season. <laughs> I think it it's one, if not the the best of uh, your career in terms of uh, shooting percentage. And mm -hmm. you, had an, you had an incredible season. Um, and and I feel like we would have won. But you got to think, Dierica Hamby got hurt in the end. Yeah. I didn't have Liz. We didn't have Kelsey Plum. Yeah. We would have won. So I I wish I could have had my ring. Then the next year I get hurt. Yeah. I was just like. I need to, I need, I deserve a ring. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You know? Uh, and did, did you even have the, the opportunity to, to, to stay in Vegas or was it? Uh, was I it don't think I did. I think because I got hurt again, it was mm -hmm. like they were moving on. I was getting older and they wanted to bring players. So, yeah. and that's okay because it's a business, but, um, you know, and then they went right after that. that so yeah, that was tough. That was hurtful, <laughs> but you got to understand, you know, it's sports. It is what it is. Yeah, now they are uh, two-time champions. Uh, mm -hmm. Asia mm -hmm. Wilson is one of the, the faces of this league. Um, mm -hmm. um, how do you see her evolution from 2020 Asia to 2023 Asia? Big big time difference. Like yeah. um, the 2020 Asia was a little quiet, mm -hmm. reserved, trying to figure out her role as a leader. And that's why Bill brought me in to show her 
you know, what it was like to, to do that. And I think um, she watched certain things like, hey, let's talk, y'all. We'll, what we Let's figure this out. Yeah. Let's figure this out halftime. We talked and we communicated. And I think she saw, like, just that communication piece is what's needed to be a leader. You know, and it's not always what people like to hear, but it helps. And I think, you know, seeing her now, she's more vocal. She's more like, come on, let's go. Like, yeah, that wasn't the 2020 Asia, but I feel good in knowing that maybe I can kind of contribute to that. Probably. And maybe I still did have a small part in the championship because – she became one of the best leaders you see now. And Jackie Young as well. Yeah, Jackie Young. All these players that you played with, uh, you probably had a, a part in all that because now there are there are superstars, Kelsey Plum, Jackie Young. Absolutely. Uh, they're, they're, they're stars. They're an amazing team. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to talk about uh, overseas because you play in Slovakia, Hungary, uh, Turkey several mm -hmm. times, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon, Russia. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm, <laughs> um, mm-hmm playing overseas and finding success um, while maintaining a, a decent mental health, it, 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 it seems not that easy. Um, what, what did you learn from all these uh, adventures uh, and which one had the biggest impact on you? I think I learned the world because who gets to live in Russia? Who gets to live in Turkey? And I think with learning the world, one thing I learned is like, you just don't believe everything on TV. Right. Because I would live in Russia and then come home and see what they're saying about Russia. And I'm like, that's not true. Yeah. I'm there. So I'm able to see things that most people in America were like, oh, my God, they're doing this. And I'm like, they're not doing, that's not what's happening. I just came from there. So it's like so much stuff that people just believe. I got to see like this is not necessarily real life. Yeah. So I love that aspect of traveling. You get to see things like when I visited Africa. What do they make Africa look like to everybody? It's poor. It's people have flies on the face. No, that's not true, because I got to go visit. So yeah. that's the you, you went to, you went to Ghana, right? To, yeah, I've been to many places in Africa, yeah. um, but it, it, to see that it's one of the most beautiful places in the world, but that's not what they show. Yeah. So I got to so traveling and playing overseas helped me to to open my mind to those things and to learn different cultures that really everybody adds a beautiful thing to the world in their own way. French, you guys do. The Russians, they they do. Now, we're not talking about government. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about government decisions. That's a whole different... But people who have nothing to do with that, they're beautiful people. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I wish my experience in Turkey would have been better at the end. Yeah. You know, I got mistreated a little bit with um, who I was dating during the time. Yeah. You know, with that stuff and, and some kind of injustice there. Uh, because I should have been like to finish like a legend in Turkey because I had played there so long. Yeah. Um, but I do believe everything I've gone through in the game, ups and downs, I, I do feel like it's going to come back in a positive way. I think Turkey will one day recognize, hey, we don't care about that. We want to recognize for how, what you did for us when you played. You know, um, I know that my jersey one day will be retired in Atlanta Dream. You know, so good things are going to come back. But I, I definitely enjoyed overseas. Um, I think to this day, I still have a bit of European culture in me. Yeah. It's it's in me because sometimes I'm like, dang, I miss, I, I might say I miss Europe. I need to go to Europe. <laughs> And then I plan a trip in the summer. I'm in Europe <laughs> <laughs> because I miss, because the culture was, I was so young and to live there for so long, I was there more than I was here. You're talking about eight months, seven months. Mm -hmm. And Dumbe was only four. So I would go back to Europe another eight months and then come back Dumbe's four, eight months. So I had more time in Europe at one point than in America. Yeah, true. <laughs> so I do love the culture and I, I feel like the culture is a part of me. So yeah. you, now you need to play in France, just saying. Yeah, <laughs> and France is one of my, let me tell you something. I just took my mom to Paris uh, this summer, Shay, and she loved it and she didn't want to leave. And she's like, well, do we have to go back home? <laughs> so that's how the beauty of Paris, like Paris is just a never ending beauty of nice people, great food. Yeah. Great culture. I love I love France. So yeah. I will definitely be back. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you're one of the 25 uh, best players in the history of the WNBA. Uh, mm -hmm. In my book, you're not 25th. <laughs> <laughs> What did you feel when you when you learned that they were going to put your name uh, on this special list? It was just like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, because when they told me I was injured, so mm. I was like, they they still think I'm good because I, during that time when you're injured, you feel like it, mentally, you feel like, oh, I'm not so good anymore. Mm -hmm. But to hear that, that lifted me up. Like I did do something. It made me feel like, okay, I did something right. I did. 
I did it. You know what I mean? So, cause I'm in the history books and I'm still not finished. So I did something right. So that was, I needed that to show that I, I had what it took and, and that I was, cause you, sometimes you never know, like, was I that good? Did people really like the way I played? You know, sometimes you don't know cause you're in your own head, but that showed me I did something right. And do you still feel like you're a little uh, underrated? Because that, that that's that's how I feel sometimes when when media, even in the U.S., we're talking about you. That they, they always seem to uh, promote uh, maybe other players that, that were yeah. really, really good, but you, you were not the the, the focal point. Yeah, sometimes. absolutely, I do because I um I feel like I've done a lot of great things. Like seeing like now seeing back, I said I've done a lot of great things that a lot of people didn't do, and I've had the toughest road. I didn't have a Minnesota team with all these stars mm. to win a championship. Yeah. I had to carry a team on my back, just like at Louisville. I didn't have a UConn team, but I was still in the national championship game with carrying, you know, this team on my back. So being, my role wasn't... Yeah, and being a two-way player. Plus. And being a two-way player. And I don't think um, that got a lot of recognition, hmm. you know, to for a player that did that. And even some things I do today, like, you know, I, I have a two basketball courts that I made for the community. Yeah. And I remember... Um, You know, Asia Wilson made a basketball court, right? Yeah. They did an article about, oh, WNBA players are now giving back with their own courts. And I wasn't included in the article. And I'm like, but I have a court too. I did it first. <laughs> so things like that kind of make me feel like if, if it's what I'm doing enough, is it in vain? And then, you you know, people like you who talk about it, it makes you feel like, you know, it's not in vain. Keep doing what you're doing. If people recognize it, doesn't recognize it, it's okay. You just do what you do. Somebody will see that you're trying to give back and help and make a difference. Yeah, because uh, I think people in France who who love uh, women basketball, uh, WNBA and stuff, they I think they they all know uh, what you what you brought to the table every single season, what you what you've done on the court. So, but Thank you for I, that. I felt I felt like in the U.S. you were uh, you you're still a little underrated. I believe so. Yeah, especially yeah. for you, the fact that you. You play defense, and you didn't just play defense. You were uh, all defensive team a lot of times. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same. <laughs> and I think the main thing too that that kind of bothers me is like the new generation of kids. Mm -hmm. They don't know who I am. They're like, oh, yeah. Angel. so that bothers me a little because yeah. I want them to be able to see what my game was like, and and you know, what I'm saying that dog that I played with that, that they can mimic on the court. Um, so hopefully, maybe when I get back, they'll kind of start oh. knowing again who this girl was. You know. I'm a different player now because I'm older, but I I still think I'm a, I'm effective. Yeah, you got to show them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, th th this new generation uh, coming into the league next year with uh, a few girls that seem to uh, to be potential game changers like uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, Paige Beckers, uh, Cam Brink, Angel Reese, all, all these girls, uh, even Ava even Leith from Louisville. Well, she, mm -hmm. she well she transferred, but she was still in Louisville. Do you think they can help the game um, grow? Is is there one of them that you you're really impatient to see uh, in the league? I want to see. Um, I definitely want to see how Caitlin Clark is going to do in the league. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm anxious to see that. Um, and Angel Reese, I do want to see how she's going to do. Um, I, I like this new kid, uh, Sanaya. She plays with NC State. Yeah, I love her game. I want to see what she's going to do. Honestly, sometimes it's those girls that, like like you said, are underrated that will last long long in the league. They just last and they become stars. So you sometimes you never know who could come up, you know. But um, I'm definitely want to see how Angel's going to do too. How she's going to play against an Angel, an Asia Wilson, or yeah, you know what I mean. Um, other big stars that are big like her. I'm anxious to see that. Okay, thank you so much. Angel, yeah. Really cool. Um, take care. I hope uh, everything's going to be like you want to. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see you on the court wherever it is. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are thinking the same. Uh, yeah. And thank you so much. No, oh, thank you so much. I'll say, what what part of France are you living? In Paris. Just oh, you're in Paris. Yeah. Ten minutes. Oh, cool, Paris. cool. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Next time I'm there, I'll, I'll hit you up and let you know when I'm coming, and we can meet up or something or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That Great. sounds good. Thank you so much. Let me know when it's come out, when you put it out. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I sent you the link definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Next, so week, see you next week, probably. Okay, that's perfect. All right. See you soon, Shane. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.